Hello, and welcome to the Global Network of Domestic Election Monitors interview with Kojo Asante. Kojo serves as the head of programs for the Ghana Center for Democratic Development, where he leads development and implementation of democracy and good governance research and advocacy projects. CDD Ghana also serves as a secretariat for the West African Election Observers Network, a regional organization that unites domestic election observers in West Africa. Kojo has been devoted to advocating for democratic governance in Africa and has led many of CDD Ghana's comparative and in-country research projects on governance and legal policy issues relating to legal constitutional reforms, parliamentary strengthening, transparency and accountability, participatory democracy, and institution building. He has also coordinated an eight-member research consortium on Africa Power, Politics, and Policies, managed the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, or CODEO, Election Monitoring Center, and designed a project to strengthen the Parliament of Ghana. Kojo has multiple degrees in law and a master's degree in African Studies. He's the co-author of Popular Concepts of Justice and Fairness in Ghana, Testing Legitimacy of New or Hybrid Forms of State Justice. Jendam is pleased to welcome Mr. Asani to this brief interview. So to begin, how does the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, or CODEO, envision using information technologies to share information with the public and other stakeholders? I mean, I think everybody can understand that uh, um, these days information technology is useful for everything, from telling you about prices in the market to you know access to health, to education, to to just have basic information about what government is doing, what is happening in other parts of the world. Um, so Kodeo, um, we, because we work with elections, we monitor elections, it's how can we get information out very quickly. Um, during elections, the public is anxious, they, they want to know what is happening uh, in other places, whether everything is going all right. So uh, the idea is to, how do we disseminate information about how the elections are going, how people are voting, what people are saying about elections as quickly as possible. So we use SMS text messaging, it's very fast, it's instant. You can send it to people's mobile phones directly. You can use the internet using mapping and other things uh, to show people spatially uh, how, say, incidents, for example, uh, whether it's a violent incident or um, voting incident, is spread out within the country. So those those are some of the ways in which we are uh, trying to use technology uh, to improve uh, the way we do elections uh, in Africa. Okay. Thank you. So what are some examples of Codeo's IT use during elections? So Codeo uh, is a domestic election observation group. Uh, we monitor elections. Uh, in Africa, so for us, it's how we can use that uh, during elections to disseminate information very quickly. Most people are very anxious during uh, when elections are going on. Uh, they want to know what's happening in other places. So, I mean, three ways you can do that um, is that you know just just to share information with people that elections are going well uh, all throughout the country. You can use SMS text messaging instantly to people's mobile phones to get updates on, on what is going on. You can use internet um, as well to show them, using mapping, to show them how especially election results and so on, how the election voting is going and so on. And then uh, we also um, have used um, SMS uh, test messaging to independently verify the results uh, using the parallel vote tabulation uh, system, which uh, uh, NDI uh, pioneered um, in Ghana, for instance. So there, there are ways. There are so many ways these days that you can use technology to really improve uh, the way elections are conducted. What implications, if any, does the Arab Spring hold for democratic development in the ECOWAS region? First, I think it's on the public side. You know, citizens, um, I think, have shown that you know they desire. Um, to have the, the same kind of freedoms that um, you know other countries have, and for a long time people did not think that in in, uh, uh, in Arab countries that would become feasible. But we have seen in the Arab Spring that that desire is natural, um, and so 
what it does is that it now increases the demand also in other places like on, on the sub region, uh, particularly within the ECOWAS regions, that that demand for you know for rights um, uh, would continue. People believe that is their natural right, and and then more and more people would demand that. But the other implication is is for the governments and how do they handle those kind of demands? Um, is it in Syria that you know you, you use force uh, uh, on your own people or in Libya you use force on your own people or in Egypt or in Tunisia where you recognize that you know the demands are genuine and therefore you find ways in which to to promote that so though that is that is going to be the tension uh, and we hope that in, uh, in the ECOWAS region at least um, they, we have the institutions to try to manage uh, these uh, demands when when they come. But uh, for me, it just means that uh, we're going to see more and more uh, people demanding their rights, and then governments would have to respond. And I hope that they respond responsibly um, and not go the way that other countries have gone. Do you see any uh, any challenges to networking in West Africa? The challenges, language is a huge challenge. Um, uh, in, in, in West Africa, Francophone countries are more than Anglophone countries. Um, and over the years, they always struggled um, to, to communicate because not, not, uh, most people are not bilingual. French, French uh, citizens tend to be more uh, bilingual. They, they speak a little English. So that's a challenge. So, for example, if you throw technology in it, uh, it can be difficult when you want to send information quickly to people. But these days with the Google translation and so on, you can get French and translate it in English. So I think there are more possibilities now to overcome those kind of challenges than uh, before. But language for me would be, is one of the main um, uh, difficulties. Sure. So what are the challenges to networking in West Africa and how is way on working to overcome that? Um, so one way Wyon is working to overcome that is uh, to overcome challenges um, is so we're trying to overcome the language barrier um, as much as possible now we have a lot more interaction uh, with both Francophone uh, institutions and Anglophone society organizations uh, we try as much as possible to communicate if you send an email you have an English version and you have a French version uh, and I say with Google Translator you can do a rough and you know uh, quick translation so that at least they, they get a sense of what you're doing. Um, we are also trying to build a lot of learning and, and, and sharing, you know, so that we can understand the peculiarities that exist in each other's uh, uh, organizations and countries. So I think the interaction, the more we interact, uh, the more we are able to overcome, you know, the barriers, whether it's physical. Or it's language, or you know, other technological, or other, other kind of barriers that we face. But I think the Wyoming as an institution provides a framework for how to overcome uh, the barriers that separate us in North Africa. This concludes Gen Dem's interview with Kojo Asante. We'd like to thank him once again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing what great things CDD Ghana, Kodeo, and Wayon do in the future. For more information on these groups, please visit cddghana.org or wayon.org. Also, don't forget to visit us at gendan.org for news and resources relating to domestic election monitoring across the globe.